I'm Casey Claiborne, and thanks for watching this Crime Watch YouTube exclusive, where we take a look back at recent crime stories that have been making headlines in our area and across the state. Two Austin residents are traumatized after three men kicked in the door to their apartment. Happened in, the, in October in the middle of the night. Police have arrested one suspect, but two others are on the loose. Fox 7 Austin's Crime Watch reporter Meredith Aldis has video of the break-in. It's almost like a seat out of a movie. And there were three guys, two of them with masks completely masked up. I came in, locked the door, and locked the front door. And then as soon as I turn around, I start hearing kicking. Samuel Vandiver runs into his bedroom to wake up his best friend, Roxanne Arfa. I just remember him coming into the door and slamming it and then being like, Roxy, like, open the window. And I remember not being able to open it because I was like asleep, shocked, and also was a little stuck. Panicking, Vandiver acts quickly. I just started punching through uh, the window in there and I pulled her out and we ran. But the men made their way into the apartment. I think they thought that we were someone else. I don't know, because the way they came in was not really worth some they laptops. Abraham Rodriguez was arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated robbery, possession of a controlled substance, and unlawful carrying of a weapon, because Rodriguez is a felon. At the time of the incident, he was on deferred adjudication. The other men involved in the crime haven't been caught yet. There are definitely people involved that have not been caught, and who knows, they might just go on to the next person, go on to the next thing. But Vandiver and Arfa say this has very much impacted them, and they have scars to show for it. Arfa's foot was fractured during the escape, and Vandiver's tendons in his arm were severed. It cut uh, to the bone whenever I whenever I punched the window out, and I had to have emergency surgery. I hope I get full recovery, but it's not looking like it right now. And they say they're moving out of the Henry Heights apartment complex. How are we supposed to stay here and feel good when everything is like a constant reminder of what happened? Vandiver's message to the criminals. Why are you willing to kill somebody for whatever it is you're looking for? Meredith Aldis, Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch. A man accused of a carjacking in Austin is also facing serious drug charges in Hayes County. Earlier this month, 20-year-old Jose Cruz was taken into custody. He's accused of carjacking a woman in Austin on New Year's Day. Austin police say the victim's car was seen later that day in Kyle. Hayes County Sheriff's deputies shared information about another robbery with Austin police. They got a search warrant and several departments went to Cruz's home on January 4th. Police say evidence from both robberies was found at the home along with what they believe to be fentanyl. Cruz is also charged with felony manufacturing of a controlled substance causing death or injury. He's currently in the Hayes County Jail. Austin police and Austin Fire are working together after finding a body burning at a homeless camp. AFD Cruz made the shocking discovery just off the Mopac frontage road near 183. Firefighters found the victim after extinguishing the fire. Right now, police have not released the person's identity and they're still looking into what caused the death. An update on an Austin teenager who was badly injured in a machete attack. Seth Gott spoke with Fox 7 Austin's Rudy Kosky about the attack and his recovery. From his ICU hospital room, Seth Gott Thursday afternoon spoke about his slow recovery from an all too real nightmare. It's definitely felt unreal, um, you know, almost just like a, a crazy dream. The attack happened Tuesday morning along the hiking trail at Austin's Auditorium Shores. Investigators say a man got up from a bench as Seth walked by and blindsided him with a machete. I wasn't really sure what it was. It definitely didn't feel like I was getting sliced with a machete. Let I me stop you right there. It, you, it didn't feel like you were being attacked by a machete. What did it, it feel like? It felt it. You, you would expect it to hurt a lot more than it did. Right. It really didn't hurt at all in the moment. It felt um, sort of like just getting hit with a blunt stick. It didn't feel like I was getting cut open. I didn't notice was there, there was a disbelief? machete at all. Did, did you just know what was going on or was it like, what's yeah. happening It took me a while, probably uh, not until the third time he had hit me with it until I realized that, oh, this is a machete that he's attacking me with. This is real. Seth told investigators he repeatedly begged this man, Ashton Kane Talley, to please stop as the strikes continued. 
According to court documents, after Talley was captured, he gave investigators a rambling excuse that he got upset for being bumped into. Witnesses say the machete that Talley used was thrown into Ladybird Lake when he crossed the Fluger pedestrian bridge. The unprovoked attack on Seth nearly cut off his left hand, smashed his right hand, and left deep cuts on his face, head, and legs. Thursday, he showed me how doctors reattached his hand and are in the process of repairing his fingers. All possible because people ran to his aid and stopped the bleeding. Dusty Colquitt, Seth's mom, has been at his side since flying from her home in North Dakota. Um, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Like there is no words to describe how just grateful I am that there are such kind people um, and for them to just rush to aid, um, to aid him and stop the bleeding and they they saved his life. Um, I don't I don't know what else to say except just uh, thank you. A GoFundMe site has been set up to help pay for medical expenses. There is no words that exist in any dictionary that can express my gratitude to the people, especially the people who were there, who weren't trained doctors, who didn't have any obligation to help me, who put their lives on the line to save mine, who did everything in their power to not only keep me alive, but uh, they kept me, um, you know, believing that I would survive. They didn't let me. Uh, I was so afraid that I was going to die in that moment, but they uh, they kept me sane. Seth and his mom tell me the attack is an example of the need for better mental health care. Do you hold any animosity toward this guy? Uh, I think I'm not happy that he did it, but I wouldn't say that uh, I wouldn't call him an evil person because I don't think that there are any evil people. Um, I think that whatever happened to this man that made him want to do this must have been pretty horrific, probably worse than getting attacked with a machete. Because um, in my experience, it hasn't been that bad. In Austin, Rudy Kosky, Fox 7 Austin News. Austin police went out to a hostage situation in North Austin near Runberg around 4.30 in the morning on January 17th. Officers say a family member made the call saying someone was in an altered mental state holding two knives and keeping them hostage in the apartment. Mental health officers were on scene to assist with the call, and after talking with the suspect for an hour, they had to call SWAT. There is mental health officers on scene, and there's a hostage negotiator on, on scene during that hour of talking with the suspect. And there, uh, the suspect was Spanish-speaking, so there was a Spanish-speaking officer all on scene. So all of those officers were working collaboratively to um, get the suspect apprehended. Officers were able to safely detain the suspect, and there were no injuries to the family or officers. Meanwhile, the Fayette County Sheriff's Office says a months-long investigation came to an end with several arrests in LaGrange. We're told their undercover narcotics unit executed two search warrants. Those lead to the seizure, led to the seizure of more than 200 grams of meth and a handgun. Three people are facing charges for possession of a controlled substance, and two more are being charged with manufacture and delivery of a controlled substance. And finally, we often get Amber Alerts on our phones, but how did that alert get its name? We are taking a look at the case of a young girl in North Texas who inspired an alert system for missing children. Fox 7 Austin's Angela Shin has that story. The Amber Alert program was launched in 1996 after neighbors suggested a system to help search for kidnapped children. This week marks 28 years since the disappearance of nine-year-old Amber Hagerman. On January 13, 1996, she was kidnapped off her pink bicycle by a stranger in a black truck in Arlington. The bike was found abandoned in a parking lot. Amber's body was found four days later in a nearby creek. To this day, who killed her remains a mystery. In 2021, on the 25th anniversary of her disappearance, Arlington police hosted a press conference with Amber's mother. Police say this is what a witness saw. He described the suspect carrying Amber in that same position as she kicked and screamed to his truck and putting her inside the driver's side door. I want to know why, why her? She was only a little girl. And to Amber's killer, I'm asking you today to please turn yourself in. Give Amber justice. Amber was the inspiration for Amber Alerts, which stands for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, more than a thousand children have been successfully recovered after Amber Alerts. Yeah. 
Thanks again for what you did. The Kyle police chief recently praised a young man who paid attention to an Amber Alert and led police to a suspect vehicle with two missing children in it. We know all too often that we get these alerts. They may come from different parts of the state, but we need to remember the importance of that information. Law enforcement really does need your help when we send out an Amber Alert. We do need people to pay attention because you never know when that vehicle is going to pass you. While Amber Alerts have saved many other children, Amber Hagerman's case is still unsolved. Our hope is that someone in the community saw something. Maybe they didn't come forward 25 years ago out of fear or not wanting to get involved. Whatever reason, we need folks to search their minds and bring forward anything that may be value to our investigation. Investigators have looked into thousands of tips. A reward of up to $10,000 may be available for information that leads to an arrest. For Missing in Texas, Angela Shen, Fox 7 Austin News. Thanks for watching the Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch YouTube exclusive. Our Crime Watch stories run each Monday on Fox 7 Austin News at 9. If you miss them, you can watch anytime on our new Fox Local Connected TV app. Free to download and you can watch on Roku, Android TV, Apple TV, Fire TV, and now Vizio and Samsung. For more on the stories highlighted in this episode, you can head to our website, fox7austin.com, and don't forget to subscribe to the Fox of Austin YouTube channel.